Anatomy of the anterior compartment includes the tibia and the fibula. It also includes the tibialis anterior tendon, the extensor hollicis longus tendon, and the extensor digitorum longus tendons. Here you can see the anterior tibial artery and the deep perineal nerve. And finally, the superior and inferior extensor retinaculum. There are many structures present at the anterior aspect of the ankle. These structures are often susceptible to injury. Common injuries and conditions around the anterior ankle. The first condition is anterolateral impingement. Painful limitation of full range of ankle motion due to soft tissue or osseous pathology. Soft tissue thickening commonly seen in athletes with prior trauma that extends into the ankle joint. This type of impingement may also be bony. Tibial bone spur impinging on the talus can become a source of chronic ankle pain and limitation of ankle motion in athletes. An osseous or bony spur on the anterior lip of the tibia contacting the talus during dorsiflexion. The second condition is arthritis of the ankle joint, commonly the result of a prior injury or inflammation to the ankle joint. It can usually be diagnosed with an examination and x-ray. The third condition is osteochondritis desiccans of the talus, chip-type fracture that usually occurs with severe ankle sprains and causes pain, swelling, and stiffness of the ankle joint. X-rays, CT scan, or MRI are commonly used for diagnosis. The final condition is tibialis anterior tendonitis. This is an overuse condition common in runners and it usually accompanies anterior shin splints. If this tendon is strained, pain and tenderness will be felt upon active dorsiflexion or when the tendon is touched. Anatomy of the medial ankle includes the tibia, the tibialis posterior tendon, the flexor digitorum longus tendon, and the flexor hollicis longus tendon. Here you can see the posterior tibial artery and nerve, and its calcaneal branches, as well as the flexor retinaculum, the Achilles tendon, and the bursa. There are many structures present at the medial aspect of the ankle. These structures are often susceptible to injury. Common injuries and conditions around the medial ankle. The first condition is posterior tibial tendonitis or rupture. Posterior tibial tendon problems can occur from overuse activities, degeneration, or trauma. The posterior tibial tendon is one of the major supporting structures of the foot. The tendon helps to keep the arch of the foot in its normal position. When there is insufficiency or rupture of the tendon, the arch begins to sag and a flat foot deformity can occur with associated tight Achilles tendon. The posterior tibial tendon rupture occurs distal to the medial malleolus. This area is hypovascular. Clinical presentation. Painful swelling on the posterior medial aspect of the ankle. Unable to perform a single leg toe raise. Too many toes flat foot, fixed deformity of the hind foot. There are four stages of posterior tibial tendon rupture. And rupture of the posterior tibial tendon could be missed. The second condition is tarsal tunnel syndrome. Tarsal tunnel syndrome is compression of the tibial nerve in the tarsal tunnel. The flexor retinaculum covers the nerve. Tarsal tunnel syndrome is similar to compression of the median nerve in the carpal tunnel. Causes include ganglia, accessory muscles, or soft tissue mass. Differential diagnosis may include a herniated disc, stress fracture, or plantar fasciitis. Clinical findings of tarsal tunnel syndrome include pain on the medial side of the foot, and pain is worse with dorsiflexion due to tension of the nerve parathesia and numbness of the foot, positive tinnel sign behind the medial malleolus, and EMG usually not helpful. The third condition is flexor hollicis tendonitis, which is pain, swelling, and weakness posterior to the medial malleolus. Dorsiflexion of the big toe may be reduced when the ankle is placed in dorsiflexion. Triggering and pain along the tendon sheath may also occur with toe flexion.
This often occurs in activities such as ballet dancing in which plantar flexion is necessary. The final condition is rupture of the deltoid ligament. The deltoid ligaments are the primary stabilizers of the ankle joint and provide support to prevent the ankle from averting. An isolated eversion sprain with tear of the deltoid ligaments is a rare injury. Here you can see the tibia, the fibula, the talus, and the calcaneus. Achilles tendon, sural nerve, small saphenous vein, the tibial nerve, and the posterior tibial artery and vein, followed by the flexor hallucis longus tendon and the retrocalcaneal bursa. There are many structures present at the posterior aspect of the ankle. These structures are often susceptible to injury. Common injuries and conditions around the posterior ankle. The first type is posterior ankle impingement, os trigonum. Posterior talar impingement of the os trigonum or large process of the talus. Non-united piece of accessory bone seen posterior to the talus. This condition is common among athletes such as ballet dancers. Posterior ankle impingement is associated with tenderness in the postolateral aspect of the ankle posterior to the perineal tendon, especially with passive plantar flexion. It may also be seen in association with flexor hallucis longus tenosynovitis. The second type is flexor hallucis longus tenosynovitis. This condition is associated with ballet dancing in which extreme plantar flexion is necessary. There may also be swelling and pain posterior to the medial malleolus. There is also triggering with toe flexion. Dorsiflexion of the big toe is less when the ankle is dorsiflexed. The third condition is Achilles tendonitis. Achilles tendonitis is a result of irritation and inflammation due to overuse. There may also be pain, swelling, and tears within the tendon. It is usually treated with therapy and injection. Do not inject inside the tendon, and it is rarely treated with surgery. The last condition is Achilles tendon rupture. Achilles tendon can become prone to rupture with age, lack of use, or by aggressive exercise. Achilles tendon rupture is diagnosed by the Thompson test and MRI. Treatment may be conservative without surgery by using a cast or boot. However, the re-rupture rate is high. Surgery is done by approximation of the torn ends. However, there is a risk of infection, skin, and wound complications with surgery. The bony structures of the ankle consist of the tibia, fibula, the talus, and the calcaneus. Ligaments of the ankle include the syndesmosis, the anterior tibiofibular ligament, and the posterior tibiofibular ligament. Ligaments around the ankle include the anterior talofibular ligament, the calcaneofibular ligament, and the posterior talofibular ligament. Here you can see the peroneal tendons which run behind the fibula. Within the lateral compartment of the ankle, you can see the peroneus brevis tendon, the peroneus longus tendon, and the Achilles tendon. There are two bursae located near the insertion of the Achilles tendon into the calcaneus. The superior and inferior retinaculum are two bands which support the tendons of the peroneus longus and brevis muscles. And finally, the sural nerve passes along the lateral ankle. Here you can see the proximity of the lateral ankle ligaments to the perineal tendons. There are many structures present on the lateral side of the ankle. These structures are often susceptible to injury. Diagnosis of these injuries can be confusing, and many of these injuries can be missed. Diagnosis of a sprained ankle may be the wrong diagnosis. Common injuries and conditions around the lateral ankle. The first type is an ankle sprain. The second type is a high ankle sprain or a syndesmotic injury. The third type is perineal tendon subluxation. The fourth type is a rupture of the perineus longus tendon. Here you can see the os perineum is displaced proximally. The fifth type is perineal tendonitis. The sixth type is fracture to the anterior process of the calcaneus. 
The seventh type is fracture to the lateral process of the talus. And the last type is Achilles tendonitis. All my videos and this video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.